Hey everyone, welcome back to my next quote I guide my life by. And I hope these quotes work for you every bit as well as they have for me. Take what you can and leave the rest. Uh, Today we're going to talk about generosity, loving kindness, and compassion. And how that's really the very best possible way to live our life. So it's, uh, today we have a quote from Khalil Gibran, well-known writer. You often say, I would give, but only to the deserving. The trees in your orchards say, not so, nor the flocks in your pasture. They give that they may live, for to withhold is to perish. And I, I really like this quote. The idea that... Uh, you know, we in the United States of America, we have this idea of extreme individual individualism. And, you know, I have to watch out for number one. And we've been trained that way by society, by our parents, by schools, by the media. It's just everywhere around us. Look out for number one, because if you don't, no one else will. So taking care of ourselves is just trained into us. And uh, we are such a hyper... Uh, individualistic and independent society that it becomes a way of life for us to think about me and mine, my little circle, the the few people I call important to me and want to take care of them and myself and that's kind of all. Uh, We have this bigger picture of the country as a whole or maybe my state as a whole or my political party or my religious group You know, we see, and so we have this very narrow uh, idea of who and what is important. And we have this idea that I can only help and give to those who are deserving. And that is a repugnant idea. I know it's, I know it's nearly universal in our society, but it is completely anti-human to to believe that and to hold that as a basis. It's kind of a basis of, um, it's a kind of stinginess, only caring about me and mine. And if you deserve it, I'll give it to you. And if you don't, I'm not giving it to you. And I think this quote goes to the heart of that. That the we reason we give isn't to help someone, it's because if we fail to give, we harm ourselves. We see that the world is a whole, is a, a complete unit. And if some parts of the whole are, are hurting and are weak um, and are failing, then the good of the whole is maintained by helping them. I am not individually harmed by helping them. We are all, as a whole, helped by taking care of them. And so I give so that I won't perish. First, because the whole will then be better and will survive, but because it's the very nature of being alive on this planet to give. If you aren't giving, you are failing the purpose you are put on this planet for. We are all put here to be generous, to giving, to be giving, to loving, kind. Every, every religion or, and spiritual movement of all time has said exactly that. We are here to love and serve one another. And, I mean, it is a universal, 100% of all uh, spiritual movements in, in nearly every society. The idea of being loving and kind is, is upheld as, as a, a highest value. And so in our society somehow, we have made it our lowest value. I will only help those who deserve it. And if you don't deserve it, and if I get, I'm gonna judge everyone who appears to me to need help, and I'm going to judge them, and I'm going to be the jury then and I'm going to be the executioner. No, I won't help you because you're not good enough. You don't deserve it. You just go ahead and die. Um, And I know when I say it that way, you find you probably just turned off the video. Uh, A lot of people just turned off the video. They're not gonna be, you can't talk to me that way. 
But it, how else can you look at it? I am the judge of you, whether you deserve to live or die. And I'm going to make that decision, and then I'm either going to help you or I'm not. And I withhold it. if withholding my, my kindness to you does you irrevocable harm, I don't care. I don't care. You don't deserve it. I've judged you. I am in a position to judge. I am better than you. I can judge you and and decide for you what you needs to happen to you. Well, what what pride is that that says I am capable of judging another human being? It, it, that I and not only that, but that I am that I'm capable, that I'm wise enough, I have enough insight. You know, I don't have a clue what's going on with you. Um, what has happened in your past that has brought you to your present circumstances. Uh, you might have the worst story in the world. And the fact that you've lived this long is only because you've, uh, you've put out supreme effort to live this long and survive this far. But instead, uh, we pass judgment and say, no, I know enough about you, usually in a five-second glance, to determine whether you are fit to live on the earth or not. And um, and I've uh, I have done exactly the same thing, so I understand it. It's just human nature. I I don't think it is human nature. I actually I I do not believe for a second it's human nature. We were we all lived as nomads. Uh, humans have been and pre-humans, human beings have been on the planet for two hundred, maybe two hundred fifty thousand years. It keeps going older, uh, but. Pre-humans, uh, primates and pre-human species have been on the planet for about two million years. Um, and in all that time, we lived in small groups. And the survival of the small group determined whether I survived. If, if the group died, I died. And if I died, the group would live on. But if the group died, I would certainly die. Uh, I couldn't live alone. And so evolution selected by who was the most generous, who was the most giving tribe, who was the tribe that took care of each member so well and of each other so well that they all lived and they all survived and thrived because you could not survive alone. To be separated from the group was a death sentence and everyone knew it. Um, and so everyone lived uh, for the group, for and yet at the same time, in some way that it, just because it was so universally accepted that we all live for the group, but we all live for each other, and we all live for ourselves. We can do all those things at once. Um, but each group, no man could tell another man what to do in those groups, for example. Each had full autonomy, and yet each sacrificed themselves for the group. That's human nature. What we're doing today in our society is a profound perversion of human nature and it's that profound that's the selfishness and hyper individuality that drives us uh, is the reason for all of our sickness and all of our mental illness and all of our drug addiction and all of our suicide and all of our depression and all of our anxiety all of that stems from one thing this I am alone, I don't need you, and I judge you, and therefore I will not help you. That's a death sentence for us as individuals. It's a death sentence for us as a society. And the further down that road we go, the more horrible our lives are going to become. So I go back to what... Uh, Khalil Gibran says here, you often say, I would give, but only, only to the deserving. I get to judge, and if you're deserving, I'll give to you and no one else. The trees in your orchards say, not so, nor the flocks in your pasture. They give that they may live, for to withhold is to perish. It is the nature of every living thing to be part of a whole, to give and to contribute. And when we act in the incredibly selfish way that most Americans act, 90% uh, of their lives, then we are setting ourselves up to perish individually, uh, harming ourselves by harming each other, by not caring or loving for each other, and collectively as a society, 
that will lose its way because we've, all we do want to do is fight within ourselves. What's, what society can live when all it does is fight within itself? Me pointing my finger at that group and that group pointing their finger at that group and deeper and deeper divisions and separations and hatred. Um, as long as this country continues along that path, there's no hope for us. Because uh, the group acting as a whole thrives and survives. Each individual fighting each other will perish. So I hope I hope these uh, <laughs> some of you did not like what I just said, um, but I hope it gives you uh, food for thought, and that if you will at least consider it, and you might think, well, that's just not true. I'm not going to believe that, and that's fine. I'm glad for you, but I hope you would at least give it some thought and consider: is there any possibility? that there's some truth to that. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope uh, you'll come back for my next quote that I guide my life by. See you then.